Hi, you guys. Welcome back to part three of our little sew along for McCall's 8218. We have been sewing this little cutie and you should already have your cutie little bodice. How stinking adorable is this looking? I'm so excited. I tried it on. Eek! Um, it's going to be great. And today we are going to be sewing together the pants, the bottom half of our jumpsuit. Just like with the bodice uh, video, I have tons of little tips and tricks, especially when it comes to sewing in the side seam pockets. So you're going to want to pay attention to that. Before we get into it, click the like button to make sure that other people can see this video too. Subscribe and click the notification bell if you want to get notified of the rest of the videos that go up for this sew along. Also, if you are brand new here, welcome. I'm Lindsay. I sew all my own clothes and about four times a year I come on here and do a full sew along with you guys where we work on one pattern together and you see how I put it um, together myself from start to finish. Um, also, this video is kindly sponsored by Aliso. If you're wondering why you're not seeing any ads playing during the video, you can thank them for that. I'll be talking to you a little bit more about their TG1600 Pro Plus Iron, some of the improvements that they made for this new version. Super, super cool. But all right, that's all I have for the intro. So let's get into it. Let's learn how to make the pants of our jumpsuit. All right. So for our pants, I got to be honest with you, I looked over the construction of the pants and I wouldn't do it in this order. Normally I would attach the pockets first and then sew all the pants together. But because we're doing this sew along, we're going to follow the instructions um, like the pattern says. However, if you watch this and you want to come back and do the pockets first, that is totally fine. All right, so we have our pants back and I always like to keep them on the tissue paper because the back and the front start to look a lot alike and now I know for sure that this is um, the back. So we're gonna lay out the back and both sides of the back like so. And we're gonna separate the front pieces as well. And what we're sewing first is the inseams. So just make sure you've got right sides together easy peasy and you should have a little notch that matches up as well so we're going to sew all along this seam here on both pant legs um at your 5 8 inch seam allowance okay so now we have like a left side and a right side of our body essentially with these pants and even though i just said we were going to follow the order of the, of the instructions we still are but i have one little hack um, one little trick that I like to do whenever I'm sewing anything with a hem. So you can see we've got our inseam sewn here and this is the hem of our pants. Uh Oh, how did that happen? I'll have to go back to the serger and fix that. Um, uh, what I like to do is before the skirt or the pants or the dress or whatever it is, is completely sewn at the side seams, I like to go ahead and press in my hems. It is a thousand times easier to press up a hem when it's flat like this than when it's in the round. Then you're having to slide it over your ironing board, rotate it around, and it's just really, really frustrating. So, all right, so we are over here at the ironing board and I am going to show you how to get an accurate hem on really anything that you are working on. Um, we need to press our seam allowances toward the back. So we can go ahead and take our iron and move it over. While I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and talk to you guys about the Aliso TG100 Pro Plus. So this is a bit of a upgrade from their, um, last 1600 this is the pro plus instead of just the pro and what they improved was this sole plate here um so this is the diamond ceramic flow and it's basically if you think about like a non-stick so a non-stick uh cooking pan it's kind of like that so when you use your interfacing on it um, the glue that inevitably melts up through the interfacing is not going to stick to this. It's going to come right off. And also, just like the kitchen people tout the even heat of their pans, it's the same thing. Um, it, the ceramic plate is going to allow heat to be evenly distributed all the way from the tip up here 
all the way down to the base. And then of course you can see all of the really great um, steam vents that we have here as well, allowing even distribution of steam as well. And the steam function actually got a bit of an upgrade as well, um, allowing the steam to get a lot, a lot hotter than it did in the old TG1600. So that is the upgrades on the Pro Plus. Super, super nice. It, that um, ceramic plate, you can tell, just totally just glides right over my fabric. I mean, this isn't a particularly like sticky fabric or anything, but you know, knits can be a little bit finicky. Let's just, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna offend the knit too bad, but um, they can be a little bit finicky. So um, that ceramic plate really just glides right over. Very easy to use. That also, of course, makes it more ergonomic because you're not having to use your arm muscles as much to move it around. Cool, huh? Okay. All right, so let's press this guy up. You're gonna need a measuring tool and a marking tool. So if I'm taking a one inch hem, I'm actually gonna put my marking tool at double that. So if you're taking a five eighths inch hem, you're gonna put your marking tool at one and a quarter inch. And then you come through and you mark all along your, um, that two inch mark or whatever, whatever mark you're measuring at. The problem is, is whatever you are taking a one inch hem and you measure at one inch, and then you go to turn up that one inch hem, then you're, the marking that you just made is now needing to be in the fold. And you're like, well, where's the mark? I can't see it anymore. So if you double it up, right? And now you're putting your raw edge on the doubled hem allowance. Now you've got your perfect one inch hem. So that's my little trick for that. Super easy, super simple. And then, you know, just go ahead and get this pressed in really well. And if your hem is not pressing super, super well, you can also um, use some kind of like wonder tape or something like that. Um, but try and go ahead and get it pressed as best you can using a pressing cloth, using the right temperature and right steam amount on your irons um, with your irons setting. But as you can see, this Aliso iron is just doing the most beautiful job here with minimal effort. So we've got that pressed in and we're not sewing anything. Um, we are just gonna leave that little press in our hem. And then when we go to hem it, after the side seams are sewn, that will just fold up naturally and be a million times easier to execute. All right, so the next step is for us to lay out our pants where the crotch is like, creating this U. So this is the front of our pants. This is the back of our pants, right? And then we need to take the other set of fronts and backs and lay that right on top, right sides together. Your fronts and your backs should line up, meaning both of the fronts should be on this side and both of the backs should be on this side. You should also have three little notches here that line up and a single notch over here that lines up. And you guys are probably wondering, what the heck is all this? Well, remember when I told you that I was going to do that, um, that scooping of the back crotch? So this is that line that I drew in with that curved ruler from episode one of this sew along. So I'm not worried about doing it right now. Um, I want to be able to try these on and wear them, but I went ahead and marked it so that I know that it is so I know where the lines are. Okay, so we are gonna be surging all the way from one waist seam down through the crotch up to the other waist seam. Okay, so now we have the crotch seam sewn. And as you can tell, once you take away the seam allowance, the, the flatness of my bum really does come, become a little bit prominent more up here and not, not so much you know close to the crotch line. So you can kind of see the real difference between my body and the pattern here. All right, now we need, and this can be a little bit confusing, which is why I'm showing you this, but we need to pair up, um, basically match up our side seams. And right now we have this giant U and this is how you get it to be looking like pants. <laughs> um, you take one side of the U and you lay it flat on your table. And then you take the other side of the U and kind of bring it up through the center like so. So now you have your waist seams together and your side seams are together and your crotch line is like one solid line. 
Okay, so we're gonna be attaching our pockets. <clears throat> so we've got to identify the back and the front. The back is on the table. All right, so when you have your pockets, you have your main fabric and then you have your pocket lining fabric. And remember I told you I was gonna do that out of this little lining so that it wouldn't bunch up as much. Um, you could do all pocket pieces out of the lining, just know that you might see this, you know? So um, I went ahead and did one out of the self and one out of lining. So, but the back pieces get the one that has the self fabric and they get laid down just like this. And so you lay your pockets down like so, and you have some, uh, a little notch, a notch here and then a notch on your side seam as well. The first step for the pocket is to so along these side seams <clears throat> at a quarter inch seam allowance. So you were gonna sew the self fabric at quarter inch seam allowances to the back, right sides together, and then you're gonna sew the lining pieces to the front at also at a quarter inch right sides together. So it's gonna be something like this. So we've got our backs, and our fronts, quarter inch seam allowance is really the most important part here. All right, so now we need to sew these side seams. So we're gonna match up our pocket bags and also our side seams, which you just have to kind of feel with, with your fingers. And then um, the pattern has those big circles on it. And so this is what we are sewing at this point. We are coming down from the waist seam sewing down to the big dot, back stitching, skipping this entire area, and then starting stitching again and stitching the rest of the pant leg down um, at your 5 8 inch seam allowance. So because this is sewn at a quarter inch and we're about to sew this at a 5 8 inch, this is what is gonna prevent the pocket bags from being visible um, just with like normal wear. Obviously, like if you put your hands in them, that 3 8 of an inch, it's not gonna make that big of a difference, but um, it will help it look nice and pretty when you're kind of just standing around. And then while I'm over there, I'm gonna go ahead and sew this as well. I'm gonna be doing this on my serger. Um, it gets a little tricky up through here. The pattern instructions tell you to cut into this seam allowance. I don't like doing that because I don't want any more raw edges than I need. And I know the knit's not gonna fray or anything, but I don't know. I just don't wanna cut into it and then just leave that seam floppy. Uh, 5 8 inch seam allowance and it's going to come up through here and meet up with the rest of our um, side seam. Okay, once you're done with that, then go press everything at your ironing board. It's more of like a steam, especially with these knit fabrics, but I wanted to show you because I went ahead and did the other side and I wanted to show you what it looks like when it first comes off the machine, kind of like, I don't know, wrinkly, the seams are all wavy, but then once you put it underneath some steam, they all kind of relax and settle into each other. So if you haven't already, go ahead and do the other side. We've got one more step to cover for today and that is to get these pockets attached to the front of the garment. So you are just simply gonna take this little flappy part and bring it around to the front of your pant. We are just gonna baste along the top edge. Now remember, you're folding along the side seam. You're not folding along the pocket seam, okay? So wherever the side seam is, that is where you're folding over. All right, and there you have it, some pretty pants with an inseam pocket where when you go to put your hand in, you will see the pretty self fabric and the lining fabric is not gonna get caught or be abrasive against the front of your pants, which should allow the pants to lie, the pockets to lie nice and flat against your body and not get super bunched up. Okay, pants are done, bodice is done. And in the next part of this sew along, we will attach those two things together, add the elastic for the waist, hem the pants, and then we are done with this jumpsuit. I am so excited. 
Leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how it's coming along for you guys. Also leave all your questions down there. I'm answering them as they come in. If you like the kind of tips and tricks that I'm giving you in this sew along, be sure to download my ultimate garment sewing guide of guides. It's totally free and has a lot of really great information about garment sewing in it. I'll leave a link in the description box for you. The Aliso TG1600 Pro Plus Iron is $40 off and free shipping right now. Another link in the description box. Be sure to check that out. And again, like this video, subscribe, and click the notification bell if you enjoyed it. But that is going to do it for me today, y'all. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all very soon. Bye!